Every good thing in this world started with a dream. And when you do share chocolate with the world, I'll be right there beside you. Here we go, Mama. This moment is the fuel that is in his tank for the rest of the movie. My name is Willy Wonka. His optimism doesn't come from naivety, it comes from hope. To him, the world is magical. This is gonna be the best chocolate shop the world has ever seen. But whatever you do, you're gonna make enemies, and people won't always treat you fairly. There's no point, Noodle. It didn't work. And when you almost lose sight of your dreams, surround yourself with people who buoy you up and support you in chasing after and getting up again. Whatever brings you positivity, whatever brings you hope, if it brings you joy and makes this existence more tolerable, don't give up on it. Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Alan Seawright, a professional filmmaker who needs therapy. I'm joined by my co-host, Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist who loves me. We're I just it. hit him in the face with the bottle. Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Alan Seawright, a professional filmmaker who needs therapy. I'm joined by that guy. Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist who loves movies. What are we doing today? We're going to eat some delicious chocolate it, from a famous chocolatier. Are we doing Wonka? We're doing Wonka! Oh man, I love this movie. It's so, it's just delightful. I was pretty sure it would be, because it's Paul King, who directed Paddington and Paddington 2, two of my favorite movies ever made. I know you took your kids, I took my kids, and this soundtrack has been on constant rotation. Just on repeat. Yeah, since then. stop. Yeah, and I'm not mad about it. No, not even a little bit. Yeah. So what am I looking for today? I would like you to maybe look for how to keep hope alive mm -hmm. in the face of uh, setbacks, troubles, people who can't say poor. Blech. Yep. That was a reference. I actually love the poor. Thank you to Air Up for sponsoring this video. Air Up is more than just a water bottle. There's water bottles. And there's Air Up bottles. But only Air Up has scent-based taste for your flavorfuls. Uh, flavors. It's a completely new and unique hydration experience. Won't make you... <laughs> it won't make you float, but it'll make you feel happy enough to be floating. So check it out. You fill up your bottle, then you put a little scent pot on top, and then you pull it up just a little bit like so. Poink. Mmm, aromatic. And then, as you drink through the straw, you're smelling the scent too. And scent-based taste means you're enjoying the flavor without any sweeteners, additives, or hoverflies. I've got peach. Mmm, peachy. And I've got cherry cola. You can really taste it, that's so cool. It's really, really neat. They have about 15 different flavors, so there's something for everyone, even you, Jeff. And it makes it easier to drink more water throughout the day because you're sciencing your nose molecules. That's a technical term. Have you got a sweet tooth? I do. With Air Up, you don't have to choose between health and flavor. Drink more plain water flavored only through scent. It's the best of both worlds. Click the link below to get an Air Up for the bottle today. <laughs> Click the link below to get your air bottle today. That's what I said earlier. You couldn't tell though. In a perfect little world of our own. Boy, I remember it. I used to spend every waking hour trying to come up with some new trick to impress my mom. But the real magic came from her. We didn't have a lot of money, but each week she brought home one cocoa bean. By the time my birthday came around, there was enough to make a single bar of chocolate. But Is it wasn't it just any old chocolate. From the books that he grew up on a river barge? No, I, I don't know. Is it just the whimsical? Best chocolate in the world. Oh, don't know about that. It works for the story, yeah, the though. The very best comes from a place called the Gallery Gourmet. This can't be any better than yours, Mama. It's impossible. Well, as it all happens, I do know a little secret. But even those fancy pants don't. What is it? I tell you. When you're older, you get to sleep. No! Not that answer. I do dig how this whole scene... We should go, Emma. What is that then? To the Gallery Cormet. What? And start a shop? Yeah. With our name above the door and everything. And that's a wonderful dream, honey. Is that all it is? Just a dream. You know. Every good thing in this world started with a dream. So you hold on to yours. And when you do share chocolate with the world, oh, I'll be right.
right there beside you. I promise? Too bad I'm not. I think you promise. No. Sleep. <laughs> so, what was it, Willie? What was the secret? I never found out. Soon after, she fell sick. And before I knew it, all I had left was her bar of chocolate. That's why I'm here, Noodle. So I can feel the same way I did back then. Eating chocolate with her. That's why I'm here in a movie theater. <laughs> I can feel the same way I did when I was a child. No, but seriously. Yeah. That's why we I that's one of the biggest reasons I go to movies. Absolutely. Is to is to get swept up in that magic again. Paul King. Casting Sally Hawkins again, because if you can cast Sally Hawkins, definitely do it. She's the mom in the Paddington films. She's the lead in Shape of Water. Mm -hmm. And she has the most charming, wonderful smile, maybe on planet Earth. Yeah. Her smile feels like a warm hug. Yeah, it does. And she deploys it expertly. And you feel Willie's loss of not having that smile in his life. And yeah. this is the first time I noticed the clouds going over the moon kind of foreshadowing the light going out of his life, the light being his mom. Yep. And, and him keeping that alive, like keeping her dream, her chocolate making, like he is carrying on her legacy. I, I relate to Willie because my mom was a kind person who loved to help people and loved movies, right? Mm -hmm. And so in a way, like I, I relate to that journey because here I am on a bigger scale, but it's her mission and it's like yep. all these things that I inherited from her. And when she tells him every good thing in this world started with a dream, I can't help but think how for years and years and years, I was racking my brain trying to figure out how can I watch movies professionally? Because <laughs> I'm not a film critic, you know? Uh -huh. but like, how can I make this my how job? I do this and make this be what I do. <laughs> and thanks to you, we, you know, we're pulling it off. It, it was your idea. I just showed up with a camera and a hat full of dreams. Oh, gosh. Usually I'm the cringe one. Everything's not off. Not today. Everything's off. Not today, baby. Let's get this over with before I die of cringe. Well, and she tells him to hold on to his because he's going to yeah, face opposition great. and he's going to face hardship and he's going to have setbacks and all sorts of, and even people trying to stop him from achieving that. Right, yeah. And it's this moment that is the fuel that is in his tank for the rest of the movie, mm -hmm. right? This conversation with her. Or Nora, or Nina, or nothing at all. Can't you trace the owner? You don't think I've tried? When I was a kid, I always hoped that I'd find my parents. Mm. And they live in this beautiful old building full of books. My mom, she'd be waiting there for me I at the door. love the little animated things. Run into her mm -hmm. arms. She'd give me this big hug like she'd never let me go. But then I realized it was just a stupid dream. Something stupid about that. Isn't there? I know things haven't been easy for you, Noodle. They're gonna get better. I'm not gonna let you rot in that wash house forever. You promise? I could do better than that. I pinky promise. And that's the most solemn vow there is. <laughs> <laughs> get scratch. We don't have long until that guard comes Toodle, Noodle. Toodle! It's not even a word. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna keep working on it. <laughs> I gotta say, when this project was announced, Paul King directing Willy Wonka's origin story, I was on board. Yeah, for sure. Right? Like, he's writing and directing, turned Paddington into just a, a series that is just magical and wonderful. I figured, okay, this is a very good fit. And then they announced Timothy Chalamet as Wonka, and I was dubious. Why? Because Chalamet's great. I, I thought he was fine in Dune, and I've seen him in some other things, and I just kind of, I haven't, I, I hadn't bonded with him. Yeah. I'm totally a Chalamet stand now. I get it. Yeah. You all were right. <laughs> I doubted, and I was wrong. Well, he, he approaches the character with such showmanship. Like, even when he's talking to Noodle here, and he's not projecting to a large crowd, he's still kind of got the cadence of an entertainer and a presenter. It's, Ladies and gentlemen. Right? It's all a magic show. Yeah. Yeah. But that's because that's how he sees the world. Right. Right? To him, the world is magical. And, man, first of all, I love the way he talks in this movie. What? You've never had chocolate? Dude can sing. I'm Like, buttermilk sing. I mean, he's not Frank Sinatra, but he's, like, in the ballpark, which is 
I did not expect that yeah. from Timothy Chalamet. No. Again, I was wrong. The whole <laughs> internet was right. <laughs> yeah, and that happens a lot, by the way. <laughs> that the whole internet is right? Oh, yeah. You can believe anything. Anything you read there, it's a good source of information. I guess we are the internet now. Oh, damn it. Noodle's in a place of cynicism and despair. Why? Because she had a dream of meeting her family and it hasn't come to fruition and she's stuck enslaved in this wash house, right? Yeah, she's like, been is... stuck with Scrub It and Bleacher for years. Yeah, which really enjoyable villains. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Any of us who've lived long enough relate to Noodle. We've had the magic beaten out of us yeah. to an extent, right? And you meet an optimistic, cheerful person like Willie and you're like, oh, okay. What a naive tool. Yeah, which is why it matters that Willie tells her his story about losing his mom and all of the things he's been through because his optimism doesn't come from naivety. It comes from hope. And she's scared to hope because you hope you get hurt. Yeah. And that's why he's like trying to spread some of his pixie dust and he's like, I'm going to help get you out of there. But Wait. toodle isn't even a word. Labradoodle is. And, and toodle is toodles, which technically I guess is a word. <laughs> There's lots of things he rhymes in this movie that <laughs> are a stretch, and we go with it because it's fun as hell. Well, and and the fact that it's Noodle's dream, mm -hmm. like the fact that she says, I had a dream, I think is what he latches onto and takes it on kind of as his own. Yeah. Because well, like, I have to make dreams come true. That's yeah. what I do. I'm Willy Wonka. Well, if he makes the dreams of others come true, then it might mean that his will. Right. I think there's some of that in there as well. Yeah. Now, I know what you're thinking. It may need a little work. That guy has the most amazing voice. It's I want him to read every voice. audio book ever. Water running 20 years ago, and the ceiling fell through. And the ceiling above that, and the ceiling above <laughs> that. The ceiling above that. But that means we can afford it. For a week, anyway. And we'd finally be legitimate. The police wouldn't have any excuse to keep bothering us. So, what do you think, Wooly? Do you like it? Do I like it? Noodles, just as I always imagined. No, scratch that, it's better than I imagined. I mean, look at this place. I mean, yeah, it's a wreck, but the potential, the bones. <laughs> Mark my words, this is gonna be the best chocolate shop the world has ever seen. Woo! You won't be scrub scrubbing much longer, Noodle. <laughs> we'll all be free, as free as flamingos. <laughs> Why don't they just fly away? I don't know. <laughs> But then they do during his musical number. That's the thing. That's the magic of, of Wonka is even the flamingos are free Sets now. the flamingos free. Yeah. The flamingos of your heart. I'm a middle-aged dreamer, which means it's tempered with a bit of realism and a recognition like, okay, well, there has to be a plan and you have to think through all these different things. And so I, I look at Willie's unbridled optimism here. And I think it's beautiful, and I'm also like, oh, oh this is going to hurt at some point. When I watched this movie, I walked out of it thinking, that was the Jono I met. Yeah. <laughs> right down to the musical numbers. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> you would skip into our apartment singing show tunes. That <laughs> happened on more than one occasion. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Working to, to get that back. I feel like I'm a little bit more Gene Wilder Willy Wonka now. Like the magic's still there, <laughs> but there's a little bit of edge to yeah. it, you know? He might murder some kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to murder any kids. If I was going to do that, I would have done it already. Where does the shoot go? To the incinerator. But don't worry, we only light it on Tuesdays. And so I, I look at him and I'm just like, oh, and I didn't know exactly what was going to go sideways, but I knew something was. Well, I mean, it's a movie for the sake of drama. Something's going to go wrong. Well, also there was at least a half an hour left at that point. So yeah. I'm like, something's... <laughs> well. <laughs> but that's the thing about pursuing a dream is you go in with optimism, you go in with a dream, you go in with a plan and you give it everything you've got. And then generally what happens is what happens in this movie. You have little peaks of glory and then real life kicks you down. There are things you didn't think of, things you didn't plan on. I know you can relate to all of this with your film career. Somebody puts Yeti sweat in your movie. And and you have to, re and, well, you don't have to. A lot of people choose not to regroup. Maybe not after the first go-round, but like after several go-rounds at a certain point, they're like, ah, this isn't worth it. Yeah. Right? And so, and so they settle on something else. And the magic of this story to me is that Willie lifts his friends and his friends lift him. And they have to regroup and come up with, okay, how are we actually going to do this? And sometimes it means 
you keep the dream, but you go about it differently. And sometimes the dream shifts. The dream changes. Right? Chocolate bushes, chocolate trees. I love this scene. It's so great. And the song is so good. This might be my favorite song in the whole movie, and that's saying something. It is. I mean, they're all bangers. There's not a bad song in this. <laughs> Before they melted away, a world of your own. Well, and he just looks like a Willy Wonka. Look at he that. Is, I, like, this scene, I was fully bought in to Timothy Chalamet. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm a stan. That's it. He's one of our greats. Because obviously it's the wardrobe, but how he moves feels like Willy Wonka would move. Yes. Wherever life takes you. Which begs the question, how much of that is an acting choice? How much of that is how he's coached? It's hard to know, you know? Well, I mean, even if he's directed that way and, you know, choreographed that way and coached that way, he still has to put in the work and actually execute it. And pull it off. Pull it off. And I assume there were a lot of choices that he made along the way to that. Uh, oh, no. Mr. Wonka? Yes? What's going on here? Oh, my goodness. Yeti yeah, sweat. Unless... Yeti sweat? Yeti sweat. <laughs> the most powerful hair potion in the world. I didn't put it in there. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. There appears to be a manufacturing error. Nobody eat the flowers. Uh, why not? What's wrong with them? What's the matter with this toadstool? My daughter took one bite and just look at her. There's nothing wrong with the chocolate milk. Is there? I'm terribly sorry, everyone, and I don't know how to explain this, but it appears that the chocolates have been poisoned. Poison? Poison? Poison my child! I didn't I didn't poison them. I want my money back. I want compensation. I want revenge. <laughs> I want my money back. I want compensation. I want revenge. Basically describes internet culture the moment you let anybody get <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, a scathing critique on cancel culture. Courtesy of Wonka. That really, really does feel like a Twitter thread, though. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it has, like, I made a slight mistake. Burn it down! Like 20 <laughs> seconds later. And all joking aside, when you look up to somebody and they're human, people turn really fast, right? Yeah, it, it hurts. I mean, if you meet your hero and they're having a bad day, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like a jerk, that sucks. And it challenges your faith yeah. in humanity, which is natural. But also... I feel for Willie here because he has been sabotaged. Yeah. And that's the ugly side of human nature. Yeah. Is we don't act like there's room at the table for everyone to thrive and survive and to do well. Like, that we have this scarcity mentality. We try to tear each other down. I've been guilty of this. Like, I get, you know, because I'm a human, I get jealous when people that I know have success that I feel like... You know, mm -hmm. I want to have, and they're having it. And I'm like, yeah. why do they deserve it? I'm just going to do yeah. I should be in Sundance. I should be winning awards. I met a therapist one time. This was very early. I was fresh out of school. He learned I was fresh out of school. When he thought that I was going to be moving to a different town, he took me under his wing, and he taught me all sorts of stuff. And the moment I said, I've decided actually to stay here, he turned on me. And I was a 20... I was almost 30. I was in my late like 20s. 28 right? or but something, was, yeah. Yeah, but he turned on me. And, and acted like, this is my turf. It was a town with like a couple hundred thousand people in it. But this is my turf. Contrast that with somebody else who was happy for me to be settling in the same town, a different therapist, and was like, we all have specialties. People will come to you that you can't see, you'll refer them to me, and vice versa. And we can build each other up. We can present together. We can learn from each other. We can, there's plenty to go around. And that is such a healthy mentality. But whatever you do, you're going to make enemies. Yeah. You're going to have people who are insecure. Because Wonka's competition, what they should be doing, okay, he makes better chocolate at lower prices. So how can we beat him on one or both of those things? How can we, how can we do it fair and square? Or how can we keep up with him? Instead of, no, we're just going to destroy him. right? But they don't. And people won't always treat you fairly. They're going to come after you and tear you down, sometimes publicly. And the best way to handle that is to do what Willie does which is keep your integrity intact. And when you almost lose sight of your dream, surround yourself with people who buoy you up and support you in chasing after and getting up again. And kidnap an Oompa Loompa. 
You let me out of here and we can discuss it like gentlemen. Hmm? Yeah, and after this comes you know, his darkest, the lowest of the low in like screenwriting parlance, right? Mm -hmm. Which is where he very nearly gives up hope and he's about ready to leave and just go and, and yeah. he's done. Stupid dream. It's the combination of losing his store and that his enemies make it so attractive for him because he can liberate his friends. Right. So he's willing to give up on it. But he doesn't because they have his back. Yep. So of course bad guys are defeated. Willie is now sharing his chocolate with the world through a literal giant chocolate fountain, which is awesome. It's also chocolate that he was recently immersed in, so we're not going to think about that. May not want to drink this. I mean, I'm sure his personal hygiene is great, but that coat's seen some. Shit. <laughs> Finally, sharing his chocolate with the world. Ready to open his mom's bar. Gosh dang, the music in this movie is so good. Planting the seed for the golden ticket. The secret is not the chocolate, it's the people you share it with. Yep. Unsurprisingly, in the theater, I was just absolutely in bits at this scene. <laughs> that damn smile of hers is so heartwarming. Kind of leave it to you. Is she actually there, or is he just feeling her? You know. And it things it doesn't really matter. Okay, there is something very true about though. If you have chocolate and you share it with somebody, there's something really. There's a bond. There is. Thank you. And the fact that this is the bar that he's carried with him for years, and he's sharing it with them like. He's showing them how much they mean to him. Huh. So, how does it feel, Willie? Is it as good as you remember? Every little bit. I wish it could last forever. Here's the thing, though. It could have been run-of-the-mill average chocolate. It wasn't, because we've established his mom makes amazing chocolate. Yep. He still would have answered the same thing to Noodle's question. Mm -hmm. Because the sweetness was not the chocolate. It was the people, it was the, the friends was he made the, along the, the way. Friend. The real bad place was the friends we made along the way. Nope, still nonsense. So, comparing my journey to Willie's, and you say college me was a lot like Willie, and that's true. That's, it's very true. And I lost my mom in college when we yep. were roommates. And I think that was kind of the, the beginning of me having a bit more world weariness, a bit more of an edge. And yet when I, when we do this show, when we meet our fans and people tell us how we've helped them and how, how we have brought them light and in and, and their darkest times, like I have a very similar experience where I feel like my mom is there and I feel like she's smiling. Now, I choose to believe that sh her soul, if you will, continues on. But I also acknowledge, like, I might be wrong on that. And even if I'm wrong on that, like, it still brings me joy yeah. to do what she would have done. Not exactly this, but the spirit of it, you know, is, right. is how she lived her life. And I was just telling you the other day how much I love what we do. Mm -hmm. And it's a very similar thing. It's it's the people you share it with. Like we love movies, we love our friendship, we love helping, and then we share that with all of you. And so I know this sounds a little cheesy, but it's true. Like this resonated a lot with me because it's our show. You know? It's uh, like I watched this movie and I was like, oh, somebody finally made a biopic of <laughs> Jonathan Decker. <laughs> Like, man, it's it's so much fun watching this movie 
and seeing you in so much of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a huge compliment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I feel like the Gene Wilder one, but when he comes across Charlie and Charlie reminds him of yeah. who he was, right? That's what this movie kind of did for me, where at the end of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Gene Wilder has gone back to his childlike innocence and enthusiasm. And I stepped out of the theater feeling like I had a little kick in my step. You know, I wanted to twirl a cane and eat some chocolate. And yep. yeah, it was beautiful. What a beautiful story. Okay, I may be a lot like the character of Willy Wonka, but I know both of us have been through similar trajectory of having hopes, having them dashed. Uh, and regrouping. what do you do? Do you yeah. hold on? Do you, do you move on to something else? And I, for me, it, it's really interesting. I get a, asked a lot, uh, you know, I, I really want to be a screenwriter or I really want to be a film director or whatever. Like, how do I do that? And how do I like pursue that in the face of, you know, opposition and, and soul crushing stuff. Yeah. And there's an interesting thing where I've only just recently sort of come around to, I am a professional filmmaker. I've done it for, you know, 15 years, almost 20 years. Uh, and I still make movies, but what I do now professionally is YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and that it was hard for me to give up on my dream. <laughs> I haven't really, but kind of a little bit like I'm more some acceptance that. there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I had to mourn that. And so th there's, there's this weird thing where, you know, if you have a dream, that doesn't mean you're capable of achieving it. <laughs> like there are in this world, there could be 50 other kids that want to be Willy Wonka, but they don't have the talent. Yeah. Right. And so that's a tough thing. It, it's, it's hard to navigate Mm. when does it make sense to not give up on a dream, but like shift what your dream is? Yeah. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it, it makes total sense. I think we have uh, culturally this this belief that never give up on your dreams. Sometimes I think of like Ellie in Up. Mm -hmm. She had these world travel dreams, didn't come to fruition. She let them go and found a happy, contented life with Carl. Right, she lived a dream. Yeah, she she lived a dream, and she was happy for the life that she had. Yes. What I would say is, whatever you're passionate about, don't let go of it. Just recognize it might be a hobby. You might do something else to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you can't take a chocolate making class, right? And do it. You may never be a chocolatier, but you can be somebody. When people come over, you're like, hey. I made some fresh bars. Like if I had a friend who made their own chocolate, but they didn't sell it, but they just made chocolate, I would think that was hella cool. Right. So whatever you do, I'm never going to open a barbecue joint, but yesterday I made you some chicken yesterday. That was pretty good. Yeah. Some smoked chicken. It was amazing. So whatever brings you positivity, whatever brings you hope, you may have an ambition to do it professionally. That may not pan out. Doesn't mean you can't have it in your life. If it brings you joy and makes this existence more tolerable, don't give up on it, right? I guess maybe don't don't hold so fast to the dream. Hold tight to being a dreamer. Is that what Ooh, we're getting at? Wow. That should be on a golden ticket somewhere. So until next time. She'll be thankful for an ankle. She'll be pleased to see your knees. But if you want to make her sigh, show some thigh. Scrub, scrub. Ew, gosh. And what? watch, watch movies. movies. <laughs> I mean, it's not... With a hat full of oh, dreams. dreams. It's not gross, actually. People like clean thighs. Thighs are great. Yeah, they should be scrubbed sure. regularly. Yes. Oompa Loompa Doopa Dee Doo. I've got another patron for you. Christine Metzgar. Bobby Bellinger. Rye. Mitza Fuentes. Sarah Fennell. You are all so great. See you in hell. It rhymes, but we don't want you to go there. We love you. Thanks for being our patrons. Hell doesn't rhyme with great. It rhymes with fennel. Sarah Fennell. Val or hell rhymes with now. And Nicholas Flamel. And you can go to hell. That's why I went... I, listen, it wasn't my best work. <laughs> anyway, Patreon. <laughs> <laughs>